Mr. T goes to a Tupperware party, will not be seen at this time, in order that we may bring you this. We've been talking about 18 vans recently. So, I wanted to talk about, in my opinion, what the best one is to get. Because they made several different 1 of 18 scales. So the new collectors, what's the best one to get? Which one has the opening doors on it? Which one's ridiculously expensive and not worth the money? I'm going to go over all that. And I'm even going to show you guys some of the vintage ones and where they came from. Oh, look at all that. We snuck down here, guys. We're going to get at those 18 vans. Shit. Oh, shit. I hear something, guys. No. This episode of Crack It with Retro Collectibles is sponsored by and in association with the Taui Diecast Museum. Killing the value on collectibles since 2019. I remember one of the things I used to think about when I started collecting. The bigger scale movie cars? How do I know which one to get? Especially if there's different companies that make it. Like, I mean, if only one company makes it, like Greenlight making the 1 of 24 scale Fall Guy truck, it's pretty easy. But there's been a few different companies that have made them over the years, all different scales. This is going to mainly be what's the best 1 of 18, in my opinion, scale, which is this scale here. Um, but I'm just going to go over kind of the timeline of them. The timeline of Ertl and where they evolved from and turned into. And then I'm going to give my opinion of what the best 1 of 18 scale 18 van is to get in your collection. But I'm going to explain the benefits, the pros and cons of all of the uh, 1 of 18 scale 18 vans that are on the market right now. So, here we go. Oh guys, I'm hooked on this combo terrible. The only problem is they run out of my chips and don't have them for like a month at a time. They had some tonight. Now I can't put them down and I'm double fit... Double clutching the Pepsis. Okay, guys, you remember we already did an A-Team van unboxing, a green light one not long ago. So I'm not going to bore you with that again. What we're going to do is we're going to unbox the dirty version, which is different than the clean version. I'm always bitching about uh, green light, the weathered version stuff that they did. But I've only really had a look at the 1 of 24 stuff that I used to own. So we're going to have a look at that, see how the weathered version of stuff looks for green light, 1 of 18 scale stuff. Then I'm going to break down the different 1 of 18 scale 18 vans and tell you the pros and cons of each and tell you, in my opinion, what is 18 van number uno, numero uno. Wow, guys, it was beautiful today in the hammer. Let me tell you, I got out of work early. It was so beautiful, it was plus 10 and sunny, but I had to work till 9 o'clock. But I figure I'll bust my butt, uh, stage these like 200 and some spinach, like there's skids of 40 per skid, and I had to bust them into skids of 16 and then stack them and put them away. Um, so I said, the quicker I do that, and the good thing about this shift is I'm setting myself up for Monday morning. So you want to set yourself up good because you're setting yourself up, right? But I still didn't end up getting out of there till 8 p.m. And the sun was gone by then. But, oh, well, at least I got out early. Um, got some good news today, guys. So I've been telling Glenn and other people that the first stage of monetization is when I hit 3,000 public watch hours. And I already had enough subs. I, I needed 3,000 public watch hours. Well... I hit that, I got the email today from YouTube or yesterday, whatever, I don't know, maybe a couple days ago, I don't know, 
but it was offering me partnership. Um, so they're going to be reviewing my channel for partnership, which is awesome. Um, now full monetization, I need a thousand subs and 4,000 public watch hours, but the public watch hours comes quick because the more subs that you add without making them shady, like I mean bugging family and bugging people to join your channel that aren't actually going to watch, people that are interested, the public watch hours comes along with it, you know what I'm saying? So by the time I hit a thousand subs, the public watch hours are going to jump up quite a bit more. Um, and when I hit a thousand subs, just a reminder, I'm not going to forget to do a giveaway and it's going to be something decent. Um, but yeah, we, we did it guys. We're almost there. They're just going to review our channel for partnership now. So we, we're already, uh, we're already monetized on Facebook uh, with the meta partnership, whatever. Um, so now we're going to be monetized. We, well, we got phase one of Facebook, which is called ads on reels is what we have. Uh, phase two on Facebook, which we'll be getting soon as well, will be banner ads and stuff like that on long form videos. So you'll see me putting more long form videos on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, so how, how the first level of monetization works, it, the good, the best part about this is they review our channel. If they accept it, we're a YouTube partner. I don't think... Oh, I don't think there's going to be any problem with my channel because I haven't had any copyright strikes yet and I keep things pretty clean. Um, swearing wise and stuff, I let the odd F-bomb go and stuff like that, but other than that, it's been pretty good. I haven't had any warnings or anything about anything, so that should not be a problem. Um, now, the first part of it, though, like I said, uh, full monetization, 4,000 public watch hours and 1,000 subs, that's when YouTube starts paying me. Um, this part of monetization, I'm not real excited about. I'm excited to be a YouTube partner because it's, you know, a step in the right direction. But the money part, I'm not excited about with this part because it's viewer funded which means they expect me to, well, they don't expect me. They're not telling me to do it, but I mean, it allows me to do e-begging. Like basically, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, I guess, but it's you guys giving me donations and stuff. That's not going to happen, guys. Come on, can you see it? Check this out. Save the Cowie Diecast Museum. Disabled War Veteran. Raising funds for the Cowie Diecast Museum. Visa MasterCard accepted. Diecast cars accepted. Shut him up. Cut him off. Anyway, that's uh, how, what's going on with the channel anyway, guys. So it's pretty exciting news. We got the email from YouTube offering us partnership. So that is awesome. Um... We might be going Sunday to the Dixie Outlet Mall. Uh, in my case, I'll be window shopping for the following couple of days when my income tax return goes in. I'll just tell Buddy to put the cars aside or whatever um, for me. Um, there's a couple that I have in mind. One of them might be the A-Team van that I'm going to discuss with you in this video. Another one that I have in mind is the Super Elite DeLorean, the one that when you open the door and that, it's got the all the details of the Hot Wheels Elite, but it sounds and all, it's just amazing. Uh, but that's not at the Dixie Outlet Mall. Another car that he has, though, a loose one that I've been eyeing up, is it's made by Sunstar, and it's a red eye rock. And you know what that would work for, guys? TV show car. Red Eye Rock. Simon and Simon? Yeah. It's almost identical to that. I was looking it up and everything. I think I would have to do a wheel swap, which I think I could find a set of wheels to go with it. But wheel swap and I'll have the Simon and Simon car. So he has 
The Hot Wheels Elite Ecto-1, which is the best in my opinion, a little bit better than the silver screen even, um, or maybe they're about the same, I'm not positive. I'm up in the air about the two of them. Um, but the Hot Wheels Elite, the best one is one that viewer Eric has actually. And it's not the big Blitzway one, that's, I'm talking 118s. Uh, the one that comes with the four little Ghostbuster figures, but that's mucho bucks. Like we're talking, I don't think you'll get that for under six, eight hundred bucks or something. Like it's insane money because it's the Hot Wheels Elite details, but it's um, the anniversary one. Like it's an at the at Ghostbuster anniversary, and that's why it comes with the little guys. Um, there's also the red box stuff that's the heritage that we're going to get into in this video because one of the A-team bands is Hot Wheels Heritage. So I'm going to explain the heritage line in, the, in this video. But anyway, yeah, if we go to the Dixie Outlet Mall Sunday, you know you guys are coming with me. You know that. Come on. We have to go see Glenn blow a shit ton of money <laughs> i'm just kidding guys no um glenn's doing a lot better with that actually sorry i'm just looking for our gloves we have a new box of gloves um we put them somewhere sorry guys i know you guys well enough that i'm just gonna let it roll while i try to locate our gloves um, they used to be beside our set, but I don't see them. And they're not under there. No. Hmm. Where you left them. No. Okay, so I'm going to have to do this gloveless, guys, this one, until we find the gloves. It's all good, though. They will turn up. I'm sure they're just somewhere silly. Um, okay, so... Now, I'm going to show you guys my loose A-Team van. Now, if you guys want an in-depth of these green light A-Team vans, check out my unboxing on the A-Team van. I'll put a link in the description of this video. I'm going to, this is more or less looking at the weathered effect of the green light, but I am going to show you the non-weathered effect one as well, because we're going to discuss what's the best A-Team van to buy. And also, what's the best one on a budget to buy as well? Um, if you can't afford the best of the best. And which one to steer clear of, in my opinion. I'm going to get into that as well. Like the one that's, in my opinion, not worth the money. Okay. So this again is green light collectibles. Now, looking at it through the box, I was telling Glenn, you guys heard me bitch about the weathering effects on the green lights before and how I seen a vanishing point and it just looked like they sprayed clear coat on it. Looks like they corrected it. Uh, that looks a heck of a lot better. I'm going to take it out so you guys can see it. But it looks like actual mud on it. Like the other weathering stuff I've seen. And I had the 118 scale or... One of 24 scales. So basically, for green light, I'm not interested in greenies and green machines anymore because the A team van on TV didn't have green rims. Okay, like before, I just loved finding the stuff in the stores stuff. Uh, but I sold off my entire greenie collection. I had all the one of 24 scale greenies, Eleanor, I had them all. Um, and I noticed that on my A-Team van, I had the weathered and the clean greenies, okay? Both greenies. Um, I noticed the weathered one, I was not impressed with that weathered look. But Glenn's here looks a lot better. Like the one of 24 I had did not look like mud on it. Like Glenn's looks like actual mud. So maybe it's made later or maybe they just do a better job at the one of 18s. I don't know. But this one's not going to get bitched at as, about as much, I don't think. Because it looks a lot better. And I'm not biased. If it looks better, I'm not going to complain about it to you guys. If they fixed it, it's awesome. 
good news because I like green light. So again, you know what I'm going to say, keep all the plastic inserts, even this here, keep it, keep it because you, especially with green light stuff, they make it for collectors. So this stuff does not come on a base. And I love that fact because it's made to be put back into the box without doing damage or anything like that. It's made so that you could take it out, display it, and then put it back in the box and all is good, okay? Um, so this comes on a three piece plastic base. Um, it's not a base, it's got two end pieces and then the bottom plastic tray that the van is on. But the point is, there's no end screwing. Like, look at this. And that's not going to damage the plastic. Don't worry, Glenn. No, I'm not worried about the plastic. There's a big bit of plastic hanging down right under your hand. Oh, yeah, that's part of the band. We're going to get all that off. Okay, so, first, though. I think Mr. T needs to wash his van. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. But yeah, that weathering effect, Glenn, is a lot better than what I was talking about. Like, that looks like real mud, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it looks like the windshield wiper was wiping it. So, they've really improved that. So, I'm not going to complain about that with this one of the 18 scale van. I don't know if it's a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but yeah, the other ones I've seen look like crap, one of 24 scale and a one of 18 vanishing point. The weathering looked like crap. This looks good. Looks like real weathering. Okay. So we're going to take off the bands. I'm going to show you just a quick glimpse of this beside my clean version. I never noticed the exhaust pipes like that. Were they like that in the movie or the show? I believe so, but you know what? You know what I think is weird? When I was a kid, I don't remember, and maybe you guys can help. When I was a kid, I remember the E team van being all black. I don't that's, remember the gray right here. That's what I remember, all black. Yeah, Glenn remembers that too, and it's funny because I've seen some green light one of 18 scales, like it's an 18 van from a different country, like Argentina or something, but the top of it's black, like I remember, but it's from a different country, the way green light did it for over there. And it's like, mm -hmm. am I hallucinating guys? Like, let me know. Do you guys remember the top of the van being black? Glenn I've never seems seen to it remember green. it. Yeah. I've seen it gray in the newer movies and stuff that they made, um, but not any, on the TV show. i never seen any of the new movies. Yeah, the new movies, they had it gray, but the TV show, I, I swear it was black. The top part, guys. You guys let me and Glenn know. Me and Glenn are both saying it was black. Um, but yeah, the weathering on this, I'm actually, uh, no complaints. There's the bullet holes. Now, like I said, the reason I unboxed this was to have a look at the weathering. We're not gonna go too in depth with the green light one, but I am gonna show you the features, show you it beside my other one. The reason I'm gonna show you this is because we have a Hot Wheels Elite 18 van here uh, from this era to show you. Now it's kind of a fixer upper, but it's just to give you an idea of the features that it has, what opens and closes on it, stuff like that, because you want one that things open and close, right? Um, and until I did the research, I didn't know which one was the best one, which one had everything to open and close because Hot Wheels doesn't just make one one of 18 scale 18 van, they make two. And we're gonna discuss those two and which one's the best as well. Uh, green light is the one that I chose for my own and I'll tell you why as well. Uh, the main reason being, cause I couldn't afford the one of 18 scale Hot Wheel or the Hot, yeah, the Hot Wheels Elite. But I'll tell you why I chose the green light. Because there was that other choice, the red uh, Hot Wheels Heritage, right? If you don't, if, if we're not forgetting. 
Okay, so before we get into all that, let's go take a walk through time here. Okay, before we stroll down memory lane, guys, that's the one of 18 scale Hot Wheels Elite. That's a first generation Ertl. It's plastic. That's right, Ertl had a plastic van way back in the day. They didn't just have plastic though. So this here, guys, this is not one of 64 scale. Um, we do have one of 64 scale here to show you. This is one of 64 scale. That's Hot Wheels size. That is one of 64 scale. Now you guys have seen in other videos, we have the Ertl one of 64 scale on card. This is a size up. This is called a power pull, okay? This used to be mine. I sold it to Glenn. It's probably the most mint loose example that I've seen. It's one of those guys. Uh, Glenn also has one of these on card, but I'm showing you the loose example just because we're showing the loose stuff to get a real good look at it. Uh, dated 1983. So that came from that Ertl line with the carded 18 van as well that you guys seen. And so that's 1983 Ertl. Nothing opens on it, of course. It is plastic toy grade. Now, action figures go in through the roof. Uh, not this one, I don't believe. No, it's the three and three quarter inch that goes in through the roof. This is a Galoob Mr. T from the Galoob line. That's the one where you needed to go on a diet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, this one here, it's the smaller figures that go inside of it. And it's a, just an awesome display piece right here. Uh, we got this in a package deal. Now, what I'm gonna show you here, this is early Ertl as well, 1983. This is one of the only examples I ever got burned on in a Kijiji deal through the mail. Because I got a smoking deal on this guy, on this guy, and on the helicopter you've seen in other videos. It's the Ertl Hel A-Team helicopter. It's got all the prop blades. It's almost mint. Usually when you see those helicopters, it's missing one of the blades, but not this one. But I got those in a package deal, okay? Everything was good, but this van I noticed in the picture, um, I'll leave that for a sec. I noticed in the picture that this looked different and just the placement of the stripe. And I asked the seller, I said, is that, you know, everything's all like, it's not repainted or anything. Everything's, you know, stock, right? No repaint, no fixy up. Oh no, everything's all good. Cause it was kind of a fuzzy picture. Get it in the mail. So the van is mint. The helicopter is mint. This has a homemade, this thing here was hanging on by a thread. It's always been loose. I didn't just break it off. It just sits there like that. Um, and it's completely repainted. So the guy, there's no way he did not know that's repainted. Look at that. But good thing about it is you can fix it up to be good and it at least looks good on display. But the cool thing about this early 1983 Ertl, Oh, is it gonna go? Yeah. That's right, guys. The sliding side door works. 1983. And it still works. That's impressive. But that's the only thing we I ever almost well, didn't almost I did get burned on through a Kijiji deal. I've had good luck with everything else. Impressive about the sliding door though for 1983 because if you remember that same era when they were doing the little 1 of 25 scale Smokey and the Bandit 2 that I have here that I showed you guys the other day with the opening trunk. They got away from opening trunks uh, in the early 2000s with the bullet cars and stuff like that if you notice the trunks don't open. Back then it did which is impressive. And I'm pretty impressed that this side door on the van opens way back in the day for a toy grade. This is what this stuff is considered, toy grade. Um, it's not detailed. You bought it to play with it, but it's cool to display now as adults. I mentioned the Galoob line, so I do have a Galoob 
uh, A Team van and the figure uh, mint sealed in the box. Check this out. From the early 80s, guys, that is the Galoob A Team van with the action figure sealed in the box. No, it's not, guys. You've seen it in the thumbnail. This is a custom box. It's made to look like the Galoob box. The Galoob van was about one of these sizes, about that size. And that action figure that went in it is three and three quarter inch to give you an idea how big the van is. That is a green light A-Team van that I sacrificed to put in this box because it was the most detailed one. I had a vintage uh, Ertl one mint. I had one on card and I had a mint loose one as well, but this is more detailed than those. So I chose this one to go in there. Even the back of the box, the guy that made it did a good job. Just cool to uh, display a loose A-Team van. So now we're going to start with the basics when they started putting a little bit of detail into this stuff. One thing I used to have is all of my favorite TV and movie car Hot Wheels, the first editions of them. That means the first time Hot Wheels did it, in the A-Team van's case, it was 2011. Uh, Glenn might have bought this uh, regular card one off me because I had a few of them. That short card's cool, though. You don't see too many of those as a first edition. And if you notice, guys, remember I mentioned earlier about the top of the van being black? Look at the Hot Wheels one, okay? Green light, gray. But if you'll notice, the green light's a hell of a lot more detailed than the Hot Wheels one. But if you're an A-Team collector, you got to have the Hot Wheels, too. Come on. Speaking of Hot Wheels, I talk about Hot Wheels Elite. But they also made the Elite one. It's kind of like a Junior Elite. It's one of 50 scale, as you see. The details are not bad, but it's uh, described as being for the novice collector. Like somebody just starting out, I guess. But they look pretty good to me. I had one in my collection before I sold it off. In fact, this might have been my old one. Corgi, the good thing about selling off my collection is Glenn bought a lot of my gems, a lot of my vintage stuff and that. Uh, this is from 2001, I believe, Corgi. Um, comes with the little B.A. Baracus diecast van. Now this is not one of 18 scale, but I'm just showing you 18 vans over the years. Uh, Corgi also in these sets made Starsky and Hutch. They made Bullet with the Mustang. They made the Dukes of Hazzard uh, with the General Lee and the Duke boys. None of which are cheap guys, unfortunately, uh, just because of what they are. But even the box is cool. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. And you know the rest, I'm sure. But yeah, Corgi has a very cool line of uh, movie cars. Uh, look them up. There's a lot of them on eBay if you Google them. Like I said, they did a Back to the Future even with the DeLorean and Doc and Marty, I believe. Uh, some of them come with two figures, some come with one. But if you're interested in this line, check them out. Okay, guys, now we're going to have a quick look at that green light. Um, we're going to look at... Uh, well, we're actually going to look at the uh, soiled one. The one that looks like it's got poopy all over it. I'm going to put that beside another one that I have. We're going to discuss those. Then I'm going to discuss one that's not present, but I'm going to show you pictures of it. And then we're going to discuss which one's the best and second best. Actually, guys, before we get into these vans, I'm going to get into the one that's not present right now. Just get into that quickly. So this one with the red box, guys. Remember the red box. It's the Hot Wheels Elite A-Team Heritage Series. Uh, this one here, it looks good on the shelf. You'll notice a difference between the Hot Wheels Elite and the green light is there's no uh, text on the tires. On this van here, 
I will let you know that the side door does not open. Uh, the driver door and passenger door does open, but no side door opens and no barn door opens. Um, so there's no text on the tires either. Just showing you guys how it looks sitting on the shelf since we don't have one here. The Hot Wheels Elite Heritage, the one in the red box I just showed you, the cheapest I've seen one is 300 bucks, and that was on Marketplace. Uh, sealed in the box, cheapest I've seen it, 300 bucks, just for price point. Okay guys, getting on to the one that I personally own now, the green light, and I'm going to explain to you why I own it. That's funny, here's the classic girdle beside the... Uh modern ones now funny thing is this one's a toy grade but almost the same size it's funny but um anyway here is the green light guys now the thing that lured me in about the green light you guys seen there's not much to show in the review detail wise because it's a van right um it's got the steerable wheels stuff like that now what lured me in about the green light so it's got the opening uh, passenger door, opening driver door as well. I'm not a big fan of the mirrors on the green light version, but. So the opening passenger, opening driver door, the details are pretty decent inside, as you can see in the cockpit. This is the weathered version. You could get the weathered or clean for the same exact price. So don't let the weathered version bug you. Back doors do not open. Now, the Hot Wheels Heritage, the, um, the only doors that open are the driver and passenger side doors, okay? Here's the sliding side door. Sorry, guys, it's hard to do holding the damn camera, but here we go. The green light has the sliding side door opening, okay? And I never noticed up in the back before, guys, but that is actually nicely detailed. I never noticed that up in the back. Wow. And just one last look up in here. You could see the cassette deck in the middle, everything. Nice, nice details in the green light. And again, it's got three opening doors. So first we had the Hot Wheels Classic 118 Heritage, Hot Wheels Heritage rather, 1 of 18 scale 18 van. The cheapest I see it for is three bills. Like what I told you guys, three bills for it. And all that opens is the driver door and passenger door. It's got no text on the tires. I like the text on the tires to look a bit better. So that's why I didn't go with the Hot Wheels Heritage and I chose the green light. And not, not to mention, so the green light looks better. It, the side door opens on it. The, the sliding side door opens. The front door, the driver door, passenger door open. But check out the price. Check that out, guys. One of my two go-to die-cast stores. Both of them are in Quebec. $109.95 plus shipping out of Quebec. Nice car die-cast for the A-Team green light. So $109.99 plus shipping or $300 and up plus shipping. And I say and up because the green lights are still somewhat in the... Uh, retail level like i can still order it from my quebec store the hot wheels heritage is long gone um so if you're buying the hot wheels heritage the only thing you're buying it for is because it's like uh older really i if you end up buying the hot wheels heritage i would keep it sealed in the box because nothing opens keep it sealed in the box keep the value because nothing opens if you're going to open one get something that things open up like the green light one, or this next one I'm gonna show you. Oof, gonna be a three Pepsi video, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. 
Woo. Okay, guys, so you see in the green light weathered version, the green light ones look very nice. I personally own the green light non weathered version. Okay, this is the Hot Wheels Elite 18 van. Out of the three, in my opinion, this one is the best of the best. Now, Glenn's is a fixer-upper that we picked up for $30 because it needs some work, and I'll show you that. But this is still good enough to show you guys the differences in them and the different features of this because it still looks pretty good. In my opinion, if money's not an object to you guys, Hands down, if you want the best of the best A-Team van, the Hot Wheels Elite is the best of the best. Not the Hot Wheels Heritage with the red box. Don't let people convince you. That's, no. The Hot Wheels Elite with the black box. Here's why. Sorry, guys. Before we get into here's why, um, here's why I don't have it. Sorry if you heard that. Money's an object, okay? So if I can't get the best, I get the second best. In my opinion, the second best is the green light. Uh, now, even if you get guys arguing, saying, oh, well, the Hot Wheels Heritage one, you know, the mirrors look better on it or the wheels look better on it. The only thing that opens is the passenger and the driver door. I mean... No matter how you look at it, the green light beats it. Plus, it's got the text on the tires. I think the green light beats it not only for cost, but for looks and for bang for the buck as well. Because you're getting three opening doors and not two for about, well, less than half of the price of the Hot Wheels Heritage. So the outside of these guys are gorgeous, okay? Now this one here obviously has some flaws. Um, when you get one fresh out of the box, they have three little antennas that look like, I don't know, they look like almost like a guitar string, maybe a little bit thinner. So there's supposed to be three coming out of the roof here. Uh, obviously this needs work, but when there's three coming out of the work, uh, roof, it looks amazing. Also, this is missing some roof lights. So picture if it had the roof lights. And you see green light has the same roof lights as this expensive version. Very similar mirrors as the expensive Hot Wheels version. So the green light stands up. I mean, you know what though? I am going to have to see. Oh no, they're the same plate, seven, two, three, eight. So, okay, yeah, they're the same plate. I was gonna say, I'm gonna have to see which one has the uh, good plate. But for bang for the buck, the green light's excellent if you can't afford hundreds and hundreds. But like I said, if money's no object, this is the one. And I'm gonna show you more of why. So you don't see it often. Well, I love that the doors, damn it. I love that the doors open so wide. You can actually see inside the van, okay? It's got some pretty good details, just like the green light inside. And I like how wide the door opens. It's got chrome handles on it, stuff like that. Now, what you don't see on a lot of die casts is this one actually has windows. Now this one, the window is a little bit loose because like I said, Glenn's 18 van is a fixer-upper. He paid 30 bucks for it, which is well worth it. I'm just showing you guys the features. So it's got this side door that I believe opens. Oh, you know what? No, it doesn't. But it's got a feature that's awesome anyway. And this is why I want this van. I'll show you. Now, so the side door does not open on the A-Team uh, Hot Wheels Elite A-Team van. But you know what it does? The barn doors. Now, Glenn, this is another repair that we have to do on this. The one barn door is... It just needs a hinge pin is all it needs. 
right there. Boom, put a pin in there and good. But it was well worth 30 bucks because uh, I think we can pillage a model and get parts. But look at that, the old school recording equipment in the back, guys, right there. Some drawers. This doesn't fold out, does it? No. Feels like it wants to, but no. No. So yeah, guys, if I'm uh, getting an E-Team van, if money's no object, this is the one I'm getting. The Hot Wheels Elite version. Not the Heritage, the Elite okay you get the hot wheels heritage you're getting just the two doors that open the hot wheels elite you're getting three doors now i'm bummed out because i thought that the side door opened on this as well like for some reason i really thought that this had an opening side door but i was wrong but it's got the text on the tires it's got an excellent stance that right there is the best of the best for A-Team vans. And the second best for A-Team vans, one of 18 scale, is this guy, Green Light. And I will say that it is better than the Hot Wheels Heritage. So do not buy that red boxed Hot Wheels A-Team van for 300 bucks when you can get this for almost a third of the price and it's better. And a lot of people do not realize it's got something that even the Hot Wheels Elite didn't have. And it is, I wish the doors didn't fight. It doesn't help that I'm recording though, with the phone in my hand. But it's got this. A lot of people don't realize, even Glenn didn't realize this did this till a couple minutes ago. Very cool feature. And we haven't tried three and three quarter inch A-team figures in this van yet, but I have a feeling they will fit, at least in the front seat. That looks awesome. Now Glenn's is missing the windshield as well. It's missing a few lights on top. The antennas and the barn door is broke. But you could see just by the stance. It's gorgeous. We'll have a nice side view look where you can't tell anything's broken. Well, except for the two antennas on the top. But it's a good comparison because the green light doesn't have any antennas on the top. For the money, green light definitely holds its own. So if you don't have an A-Team van yet, and you're thinking about the green light one, I say grab it because once it goes out of retail, that's when people are charging two, three, four hundred bucks for this stuff. And that explains why that Hot Wheels Heritage, the red box A-Team van is $300 plus because it's on the secondary market. You're not paying for extra details, extra movie or TV show accuracy, nada. You're paying because some clown says, give me 300. Sorry, I'm not calling people clowns that are charging 300 for that because I don't know what the situation is. Maybe they paid 300 themselves and they're getting their money back, who knows. Don't mean to insult anybody, but you guys get my point. There's no sense, like it's common sense. Pay 300 for something with this much or pay uh, one, what was it? 110 plus shipping for something with this much bang for your buck. It's not rocket science, guys. So again, guys, just to be clear and it, in usual fashion, this video is in my opinion. Um, but then again, it should make sense. The green light, you can still order it. It's still in retail, 109 plus shipping, opening side door, 
um, opening front and passenger door, Hot Wheels Heritage Red Box, three bills plus shipping, cheapest I've seen it, opening passenger and side door, or opening passenger driver door, or this, and this actually has the window over the sunroof as well. So it's got the, the window is half rolled down as an added touch, which is a nice detail. Uh, the back barn doors are opening really nice. Now again, like I said, I know this one is a fixer upper, but it gives you an idea of how they are, how nice they are. Picture the three antennas sticking off the roof of it. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. I think this was worth more than 30 bucks just the way it sits because it looks decent the way it is. I mean, show you guys what the bottom of one of these looks like. So just make sure. Now these, I didn't talk about the price point of this actually guys. So this is the good part. So this is up there in price. This is more than a green light. This is why I went with green light. This is one of those situations where I said, if I could afford it, I would get this, but I can't. So I'm going to get the second best, which is the green light in my opinion. This here, the cheapest I see it, I know of one for 350 bucks plus shipping. And that's mint in the sealed box. One of these, I know of one for 350 plus shipping. It's not the one that's at the place at the Dixie Outlet Mall, but I'm going to see if I could work that guy a deal this weekend, possibly. See what he would give. Well, we're going to see if we can get a package deal and see what he would do the A-Team band with the other stuff. That's how we usually do it, guys, and that's a good way to do stuff like that, is go with a few friends and everybody go in, buy a few pieces, and get a bulk deal, because... It's like buy, it being a drug dealer. The more you buy, the cheaper it gets. Like if you're selling pot. What am I talking about? Well, if you're selling pot, if you buy an ounce, let's say you buy an ounce for $200. Now I'm talking, this is back in the 90s. Um, you get an ounce on spot for $200, sell it for 60 or 70 a quarter, you make, uh, you know, 40 bucks, whatever, 60 bucks for your ounce, whatever. But if you buy a quarter pound, you get the quarter pound for 600 so the price goes down. So you're making more money. And then if you get a pound, it gets even cheaper. Well, it works the same with diecast. I was bugging uh, my buddy Dave because I told him, because he buys collections off people lots like he buys people that are getting out retiring they want out of the collection and they just want it gone Dave will buy the entire collection and that's what I said to him because he gets some pretty good deals I said it's that's ingenious because that's the same approach that's the uh successful trafficker approach cut out the middleman right so and that's what Dave was doing with diecast, and I told him respect because that's I thought that was awesome, smart of him. I th I think that if Dave was illegitimate, he would make a really good uh, dope dealer, my buddy Dave. But it it would it'll never happen. But I'm just saying, if he was corrupted, he would go far in the dope dealing world. <gasps> oh, I didn't notice that. What? The hood opens on the Hot Wheels Elite one. Oh, thank God I was fiddling, guys. So this is another reason for the Hot Wheels Elite. Now, I thought, why would they have an opening? I didn't think to check because, you know, the little engine thing comes out in here, right? But they still made it realistic enough to put the details that would be under the hood. So respect to Hot Wheels Elite for that, because that is awesome. Now I'm going to check the green light one. I'll check it before the end of the video, let you guys know. But anyway, just to recap, if money is no object, get one of these as of... It's March 1st, 2024, as of March 1st, 2024, because things inflate over time with appreciation and stuff. And when things get out of retail, they can get crazy. 
March of 2024, March 1st, the cheapest I see this online is 350. And that's Canadian funds, that doesn't include shipping. 350. For the Hot Wheels Elite, one of 18. That green light with the opening side door, um, that thing is $109.99 plus shipping. And the Red Box Hot Wheels Heritage is three bills plus shipping usually when I see it. Now I will say, if you're a diehard collector, I, I'll give you an example. My friend Eric, who has a huge Ghostbusters collection, okay? He bought the Hot Wheels Elite Ecto recently, the Red Box one. He told me straight out, he said, Neil, I know it's not the most detailed one because he already has the most detailed one. He owns it. He, own, he has all the best Ectos. If it's an Ecto, he has it, okay? Um, he goes, I know it's not the most detailed one, but I don't got it. Like, he, he needs to have every one because he's a Ghostbusters guy. So if you're an A-team guy that has to have every A-team van, get the Heritage. Um, so the green light has the sunroof filled in as well. As I suspected, hood does not open on the green light. But still, with that sliding side door, this is your second choice, in my opinion. Over the Hot Wheels Elite. So you've got your price points, guys. I'm going to include a link in the description for not only the original... 18 van unboxing green light that I did that we could that I really go over all the details and stuff and I'm going to include a link how to order the green light one since it's still in retail now I can't include a link to order the Hot Wheels Elite or the Heritage because it would be inflated you know what I mean an eBay ad or something like that but I can include a current listing to get yourself a green light 18 van one of 18 from a reputable place that Retro Collectibles recommends. There you guys go. Well, there you have it, guys. There's my opinion. Now, anybody that does have the red box 18 van, there's not a thing wrong with it. I just hope that you didn't pay a heck of a lot for it or whatever. But if you're happy with it, I'm happy that you're happy with it. I'm not putting it down at all. I think it looks good. I just, for me... Now, I don't know, the Hot Wheels Heritage ones, I don't feel guilty not showing you guys it physically because for me, it not having those extra opening doors is enough for me to just write it off. It's not in the same category details-wise. Um, the only collectability I would say it would have is if it's of a limited number or something like that to the guys that that's important to, maybe Hot Wheels guys, something like that. Trying to stay out of that beam of light. Um, but other than that, I would say uh, bang for your buck. If you're choosing between the Heritage or the green light, go with the green light. And one last thing before we go, guys. I've had the odd person asking about Glenn, telling me to wish Glenn good wishes, stuff like that. I've talked to Glenn about appearing on the show, appearing on camera. If you guys would like Glenn to appear on camera, leave a comment about it and I will let him know about it. And maybe we can convince him to appear on the show and start coming on camera if he's comfortable to do that. But until then, I'm not going to bug him. I've talked to him about it. He's not close to it, but maybe leave some comments and I'll let him know. And maybe we can convince him to join us on the show. Um... That's it, guys. Just trying to help you guys get the best bang for your buck like normal. Thanks so much for watching. Please uh, hit that like button for me. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe and become a member of the Retro Army. Be a Retro Maniac. And uh, share it with your friends. And don't forget, if we go to the Dixie Outlet Mall Sunday, you're coming with us. The weed's on you. As always, guys, happy hunting. Don't get right with the Lord, but the devil moves everywhere. Hey, Randy, what? The devil, huh? The devil moves everywhere.